Greetings, this is Ed from the University of New Mexico Data Network Group and the Albuquerque Data Project. I'm putting together this presentation for Tech Days and I hope that it'll be useful for you. BGP and peering at the Albuquerque Data Project. I'd like to go over a few basics of routing, uh, how routing works. Now, Porter Gateway Protocol routing, BGP works. I'll give an example of the BGP configuration. I'll review some of the WRN, WRN and peering connections for New Mexico through Albuquerque Data Pub. I'll go over some basic BGP commands. Some basic troubleshooting of EGP and link state for routing. And I'll give a description of peering connections and other future connections uh, at the data pop that, uh, that we can see coming or have recently announced. Basics of routing. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, routing is destination based protocol. If you're looking for another site on the internet, you're not looking. Um, looking for yourself. If you want to do that, there's uh, websites that will um, answer that. You can Google who am I um, or various other, other things. Um, but you're going to put in an IP address or a name that will get resolved to an IP address uh, that you're trying to reach. And the message is typically delivered through unicast routing. There's other kinds of routing, multicast. And then, two, right? That's another kind. Uh, delivers a, a message from one node to another, a, that single specified node. Uh, sometimes there's caching uh, that happens, or um, you're redirected to a, a local nodes, or so sometimes that name uh, that is resolved through DNS ends up being you know, more than one. IP address. There's a few references for routing that I've added to this page. The communication between two network cache hosts occurs in two directions. It can be mutually exclusive, exclusive based on routing policy. That means uh, if you're trying to reach a, re a website in uh, Oklahoma, uh, it won't necessarily the traffic from your connection to your internet provider through that internet provider to the site in Oklahoma may take one path. The return path may come another direction. It may come from, from that connection in Oklahoma to their internet provider through uh, peering connections, multiple internet providers, back to yours, and then back to you. Um, it's uh, asynchronous routing. Uh, the only time asynchronous routing is really a problem is if there's a huge dis uh, dif difference in latency on the um, the two and the return paths, or if uh, there's a firewall involved involved at one end or another, and that traffic is destined to pass in or out different interfaces on that firewall. Firewalls tend to drop traffic um, when there isn't a session on the same interface. In any case, um, routing policies, you base your routing decisions based upon information that your network sees uh, coming from uh, your internet connections or your other peering connections. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, an organization or, or a company at the far end, educational institution, whatever, will make routing decisions based upon the connections that they have and often that decision can be made based upon cost, uh, based upon um, best path, best, you know, uh, best available um, PGP, PGP path um, that's determined by the number of AS numbers between yourself and uh, the remote location. Routing with BGP or a gateway protocol. I'd like to go over a few things. What is BGP? Uh, what are AS numbers, and how do we use BGP? I'll cover that in the next few slides. It's an acronym for Border Gateway Protocol. 
It is the accepted standard for internet routing between separate networks, um, as opposed to using OSPF or proprietary routing protocols, um, IGRP, PIGRP. Um, uh, some of those proprietary protocols may have been released um, and can be used by other vendors as well. Um, uh, RIP router, um, sorry, RIP um, ISIS are a couple others. TCP is a routing protocol, not a routed protocol. A routed pro protocol could be HTTP, could be um, um, actually it's going to be TCP or UDP are routed protocols. Um, EDP is a path vector protocol, uh, so it keeps track of the path and a route uh, that's available based upon auto autonomous system numbers. So there may be a path between your autonomous system number and an autonomous system on the other side of the country. There may be five or six different paths to get there. And so um, when the advertisements are done between different companies, different internet providers uh, along the way, um, based upon local local peering um, uh, agreements for transport, those kinds of things. Um, there may be seven AS numbers on one path and five AS numbers on another path, uh, and that can take um, that can be advertised to you. Um, let's say you get an advertisement for seven, you get an advertisement for five, based upon the way BGP looks at that, it's going to typically s select the five um, unless other um, other configurations modify that in some way. So, <clears throat> The autonomous system for the University of New Mexico consists of uh, a class B network, multiple class C networks, um, and this would be your autonomous system. All this, the networks that your um, organization, um, uh, university, educational institution is responsible for would be what is contained within your autonomous system. The RFC for that is 1930, um, and of course, there's some pretty extensive wiki and other documents. On that. How do we use BGP? Um, we make routing decisions uh, based upon um, policies that are set. Um, we make our outbound routing decisions uh, based upon information we receive inbound, and uh, we give our outbound information to help others make decisions upon how they're going to route to us. So the path vector protocol portion of this is, um, that's where I'm talking about the five AS numbers that you're, um, that you have a path vector for the network you're trying to reach and you have a seven AS path um, for the route vector that you're trying to reach. So for inbound updates, you're going to look at your route map, so a route map that you configure, any filter list you have applied to uh, that connection, uh, and after that, any prefix list and distributed list. For outbound updates that you're sending for others to make decisions upon, uh, it is in reverse. Your prefix list, distribute list, then your filter list, then your route map. We use our BGP commands to accept certain autonomous system paths and deny others. So you can say, um, let's say that five, that five AS number path that um, that we discussed earlier. It's uh, there's a bad problem in Chicago somewhere, and that path is just um, it's just terrible all the time. Uh, so you're losing, you're dropping packets, you're you got a uh, slow response time through that connection. 
And so you can go in and say, um, I want to drop anything with this five, um, this five AS number path and not accept that route over that path. And so your outbound traffic from that point forward would use the seven, uh, the seven uh, AS number path um, that you're seeing for that route. Uh, you can also set preferences based upon those AS paths. Um, but um, again, you go back to that order of, you know, whether the route map is going to take precedence first, et cetera. You got to keep in mind your outbound information affects your inbound, uh, how other people send traffic to you. But your route map in um, is, is how you look at the routes that are being sent to you. Um, so uh, adjusting your inbound route map uh, to, uh, to separate out that five AS path route is where you would make that change. So uh, earlier when we said your AS, uh, your autonomous system is the number of, is your collection of routes. That's what we're saying here. We use BGP to express the prefixes that, are, that we are responsible for to other networks. That's our footprint essentially on the internet. The basic commands needed to establish a BGP session uh, you need your autonomous system number. <clears throat> uh, on, uh, on Cisco, um, on uh, the router BGP, your AS number is the command. On Brocade, it's router BGP, and then you set your AS number on the next line. Um, so it may be different on the router vendor's equipment that you have. Uh, multiple different router vendors, Extreme, Juniper, uh, Cisco, Brocade, um, even Infinera, uh, Wave Division Multiplexing has a, um, has a version. Uh, but this is something simple. Basically, you have to define what your autonomous system is for your router. You have to configure neighbor statements to be able to establish BGP connections to other peers. And your neighbor statement is typically something with the IP address of your neighbor and, um, and the autonomous system uh, that it is a member of. Um, your network statements to establish which IP uh, networks your autonomous system is responsible for. Um, that's where we were talking earlier about your footprint. What are your networks that you're responsible for? Uh, you need BGP commands that make uh, interoperability happen. Um, so, uh, there are, uh, due to the large number of autonomous system, uh, large number of autonomous system numbers, they're starting to handle out longer uh, AS numbers. And there's some configurations that you need to adjust to be able to make uh, to listen for those, because typically your uh, basic BGP configuration would not listen for those. And then there's some basic security uh, configuration for BGP. You don't want people trying to spoof uh, into your BGP, uh, your BGP configurations and, uh, and change the way your routing happens. BGP configuration continues with address family for both IPv4 and for IPv6. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, the network statement listed here this is not a real network, or if it is, it's not one that, uh, that I looked up or anything. I just put some numbers there. Uh, but this is saying this is our footprint on the internet, and this, these are the networks that we are responsible for and that we will be announcing. Re redistribute connected would be uh, redistributing a route on the connected interface. Uh, not the route itself, but the connected interface network um, that you define. Redistribute static would be a, if you have a static route in your routing table for a network that's beyond you, then uh, you would be redistributing that into your BGP announcement. Uh, in this case, um, neighbor that we're using for the example Carbo, Carbo in and Carbo out are the route maps that we'll be using to configure IPv4. 
And then um, down below, IPv6 is configured similarly. The, again, a, uh, a uh, network is defined here that we would be announcing out as our footprint for IPv6 uh, to our neighbor. Again, we're just shipping static. We have static routes to um, do networks beyond. We would, we would have those are distributed into the as well. And I'm not sure if this is a deprecated command or not, but um, activating the IPv6 um, TCP connection, um, that command is here showing that the uh, session is active. And uh, we would also um, use an in and an out for that as well. Continuation of the configuration used by BGP, um, but not within BGP. Once you configure those last two uh, section on IPv4, IPv6, um, and then uh, any multicast or IPv4 as well, um, this is where your route map is called to be used for that uh, that BGP section. So in this case, our um, our inbound connection from Carbo. We want to permit the default route because they're our internet provider. We want to deny a vote on list. Uh, so a prefix list created, sorry, a prefix list, I won't give an example of that, but prefix list is another version of access list that you define on the route. Um, in this case, a prefix list for default um, has a default route in it, 0.0.0, .0, .0 and, and we want to permit that so that if we don't have a more specific route in our routing table, we'll take that default route out to the internet. The uh, route map um, next statement, a deny, uh, is a deny statement for 20, we're denying the vote on this. So we would, we've created another list that we've taken, um, um, which is, which are vote runs. And those are um, networks that are not supposed to be routed on the internet or redistributed outside of the uh, internal research network. So we don't want to accept any of those from our upstream connection. And then <clears throat> if we have any specific prefixes that we want to accept um, as a, you know, in addition to that default route, if we want to list them and not take a full routing table, we would match IP address um, that are listed in the prefix list, carbo accept list. And of course you can name your prefix list anything that you like um, within uh, the limitations of your device. And then in this case, we're setting our local preference to 120 and that hierarchy of what we listen to um, for, each, um, for each peer um, is still taken into account here. You can look back a couple slides to see that, or you can look it up on the BGP uh, resources that I provided for you. Um, for our outbound announcement, you want to deny the default announcement out. They're probably dropping it if we send it back to them, but we want to make sure that we don't that we're good uh, neighbors and we don't send that back to them. Uh, we also want to not send any bogons that we might have on our network out, so we uh, deny that out as well. And then um, our prefix list would be a list of all of the networks that we uh, that are in our footprint um, or that we are redistributing from a private PS number um, and as noted at the bottom here, um, so both of these route maps have an implicit deny all at the end of them. Um, so if there's anything not specifically listed in these, um, in these route map statements, uh, they will hit the deny all that is implicit at the bottom. There's still prefix lists, need lists, um, access lists, and more configuration for PGP. And it just shows how complex this protocol is for configuration. And peering for New Mexico, you know, Albuquerque, Google Pod. The WRN is the Western Regional Network, and we uh, we have a hundred gig backbone that we are currently sharing with Scenic. Uh, we're sharing it with Front Range Gigapop and Pacific Northwest Gigapop. So we have. Um, circuits uh, via local fiber providers and via internet to um, kind of with a circle around uh, the Western United States. So we peer with internet to in Chicago, 
We appear with Scenic in California over two paths, both to Digital California and to the California Research and Engineering Network. Um, we appear with Level 3 in Denver, CenturyLink here in Albuquerque. Uh, we have Google Global Cash uh, here in Albuquerque, and we appear with the Netflix Cash up in uh, Denver as well. So this is a map kind of showing that um, the northern path to California passes through the Front Range Gigapop Pop in Colorado and Pacific Northwest Gigapop Pop in Washington. The southern path passed through El Paso to California. Um, there are connections on the WRN to learn in Texas. And of course, Scenic and Pacific Northwest have connections to um, um, across, across the ocean to the West. All right, some, uh, some BGP commands. Let's see if I can uh, redeem myself here. Uh, some BGP commands that will help you uh, when you're looking at BGP and um, uh, trying to establish connections. The show IP BGP summary command uh, gives a summary of the BGP sessions that you have. If you have eight, they'll be down here. You'll have eight neighbors. Um, in this case, in the example, I just have the one that I um, I'm mocked up here. Um, get the um, identifier for the, uh, the local router. So, um, and the local autonomous system number. Get the BGP table version and um, the number of network entries that are currently there. And you can read down the rest of those uh, as you look. Um, the bottom part, neighbor. Uh, what version of BGP you're running, the autonomous system number, the number of messages received, the number of messages sent, um, the number of routes that you have waiting in the queue to go out, or I'm sorry, in the queue to come in and be processed, out the queue to go out, how long that BGP session has been up, and the number of pre prefixes that are received on that connection. Now, um, some, um, some connections will show both some configurations or the show commands will show you both the number sent and the number received, received on that connection and it will depend on your router. Um, and there are ways to see that in different modes as well. Um, I guess that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, show IP BGP and then the IP address of the um, so just the command show IP BGP um, will show you the IP, IP uh, routes in the order gateway protocol table um, for your local device. And this will include um, all of the networks that have been announced to you. Um, in this case, it's not a true type font, so it's, it's over just a little bit and the path is really starting at 40498, and that is the local um, that is the local AS number. The up the next upstream upstream um, AS number 19401, and then the one beyond that 668 for those routes. We won't go through an entire routing table that's over 800,000. Uh, if you're trying to find a configuration on your router. Um, Sometimes it's it's down pretty far in the configuration. You can just do a show run on your router. It can take a while to get down to a tab or space down to it. Um, some of the routers have the ability to pipe your command uh, to um, uh, to a regular expression or secondary command. So in this case, show run pipe to begin BGP will start the show command down at the first first time it sees BGP. In this case, it goes down to router BGP and you start seeing the configuration and it continues on by page for the router, unless you have the router configured uh, to be by one, I know. So. <coughs> uh, more BGP commands. Uh, show IP BGP neighbor can be modified um, with the IP address of your nearest neighbor, um, IP address of one of the neighbors uh, that you saw in the BGP summary. Um, in this case, um, 
55.14.121.49. And um, it's just showing more information about um, the connection between the two of you um, and, and route maps that are involved, uh, anything like that. So basic troubleshooting to establish your BGP connection. You, you have to be able to ping between the two of you that, that uh, you have to have TCP up and running between the two devices or you won't, your BGP will not establish. Um, and ping is, is a quick way to test that. So you ping locally or through internet service providers uh, providers to make sure that those um, IP addresses are reachable. Uh, you can use trace route as well. Um, some BGP commands um, can be used from route servers out on the internet. We won't be covering that, but um, this traceroute.org website, uh, you can find some still active route servers and uh, ping and trace route tools out there. Um, you can also get some performance tools from Internet2, and um, I like to use WinMTR. It, uh, it uh, has a good set of, you know, it, it typically shows where um, latency is, is on a path, um, and it's got easy copy and paste for troubleshooting and sending information back and forth with another engineer or person that you're doing troubleshooting with. And of course, at, uh, at UNM, we have uh, device persona.unm.edu, and it has some of the performance tools um, from Internet2 uh, up and running there. You can look at some transfer information. You might be able to download uh, some of your own to do bandwidth testing with that device. Um, in addition to that, if you download some of those tools, uh, you can do testing to Internet2 uh, test devices around the Internet as well. So uh, for using a local ping to verify a link state, of course you ping the IP address on the remote side, um, you get a response. Uh, in this test case, um, we got all five of our packets back. And, and then in, since we don't typically have access to the router on the other side, I went out and found a device that will do a ping to um, my IP address. And since that network is shared, it's going to be in the routing table for, um, uh, it's possible for it to be in the routing table for both, for both routers. So um, a remote ping of 55.14.121.50 um, from a distant part of the internet is going to, if you look at the response, all five packets came back. I have TCP uh, is up and running uh, between the two devices. And um, my response time is considerably higher. That's because it's not the next hop, um, you know, it's not the next hop router that's doing the thing back. So um, the test device is going to have more time, uh, more time for the response to get back. All right. So here's some of the um, here's some of the local peers that we're currently connected with at uh, Albuquerque Gigapop. Uh, Checksnet through a couple of different uh, Navajo Tech, um, of course, UNM main campus. Uh, all the kind of orange ones down at the bottom are, um, are local connections. The ones up at the top are um, out, uh, upstream connections, uh, if you will, connections that are out on the internet that we turn uh, to keep services running for all of us. So some of the recent connections uh, that we have uh, established here at the Google Pop. Uh, Windstream built a lateral fiber, fiber into our suite for the Northern New Mexico College. And so um, they have a connection to us through Windstream. They also have a parent connection through Windstream. So they have some redundancy built into that connection. The Mill Rio Grande Pueblo Tribal Consortium E-Rate Network uh, has been connected. Uh, there's some uh, Zeo fiber between Albuquerque and Berlio, and there are multiple 10 gigabit, uh, eight 10 gigabit connections across um, across that that is uh, providing service for that e rate network. We're, we're hoping to use that more for them here soon. Uh, CNN pairing was connected uh, via the APS data center. 
Um, Cass is in the H5 data center and is out there in both NMSU and their expo conference for their, uh, for their students. Um, Hurricane Electric in uh, the H5 data center is offering internet service and they're, uh, apparently their pricing is, uh, is pretty good at this point. Uh, so that's something to consider. There is some fiber between us and H5 data center for that. Uh, Sacred Winds is building a suite a couple rooms down from UNF. There are no current plans for a cross connect. Uh, Navajo Tech is planning to appear with Front Range Gigapop in Denver directly for research grants and we look forward to working with them on that. Uh, the Western Regional Network is upgrading to Juniper 10,003 routers um, and they've done one replacement up in Colorado already and, um, and we'll be looking forward to getting more of those upgrades. Uh, so the Gigapop here at Albuquerque will uh, once the upgrades are completed, it's supposed to have a 100 gig connection to um, uh, scenic in California and a 100 gig connection to um, Front Range in Denver. Uh, when the upgrades are completed, we currently share those connections with um, both scenic and Front Range, and they'll be adding an additional 100 gig circuits. Uh, so those are going to be separate. Uh, that's all I have today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please send an email to backbone-l.unum.edu and I will um, put a presentation with corrected um, in and out statements up as well. Thank you very much.